What's going on everyone? Juicebags here, and welcome back to some Dungeon Defenders 2. I wanted to take a quick moment and clarify some of the confusion involving elemental servos, chips, and elemental combos. Now first things first, elemental combos are nothing new to DD2. They've been around since early, early, early alpha, and there are several available to choose from. Uh, first off, you've got the Shatter Combo. The Shatter Combo is when a frozen enemy gets hit with crushing damage. Now, that does not mean Earth damage. That means crush damage. Now, crush damage is not listed anywhere in the game, so it takes a little bit of trial and error and practice to find out exactly what crush damage is. Now, when an enemy is shattered, they do take a big spike of, da big spike of damage, and... In the cases of most of the mobs in the game, this is a one-shot. Now, any of the healthier mobs, of course, this is not going to one-shot them, but it will do a nice chunk of damage to them. Now, things that can cause the Shatter combo... Now, first off, the enemy must be frozen. Uh, from any of the freeze sources in the game, the Gun Witch's Ice Needles, Proton Beams Freeze, uh, Frostbite Towers Freeze, any way you can freeze them, freeze them up, and then you want to hit them with the Shatter combo. And the crushing damage will come from things like a Monk's Pulse Smash, a Squire Slam, Cannonball Towers, Earth Shatter Towers, and even Fall Damage. So if you're using a knockup build and you're freezing the enemies before you knock them up, they're going to automatically get the Shatter combo when they hit the ground, which is pretty darn awesome. Now moving right along, you've got the Ignite combo. Now the Ignite combo can be triggered by hitting any oiled enemy with fire, which means if an enemy is oiled up from, say, a Ballista, or from a Huntress actively, or from an Oil Geyser from the Lava Mancer, and then you hit them with any source of fire damage, they will be ignited for a damage dot that will tick over time. Now, first off, I gotta come right out and say that although this is without a doubt really one of the coolest combos in the game, as the graphic on it is just absolutely amazing, that dot that ticks is just a little tickle. It's not doing a whole lot of damage, and in my opinion, this is not a combo that should be pursued. Uh, the reason being is, first off, the oil, when ignited, is removed from the enemy. So you automatically lose that slow that is available on the enemy when they're oiled. Now, if any of your defenses had the opportunity to just get one more shot in as the enemy is slowed, it is going to be far more damage than that Ignite combo is going to tick for over its entire course. Now, like I said, it does look super, super cool. There is zero doubt about that. But as far as effectiveness level, it's just a slight tickle and not doing a whole lot of damage. And then moving right along to what, in my opinion, is the easiest combo to apply and the most effective combo, and that is Electrocute. Of course, uh, when an enemy is electrocuted, they are drenched and then hit with any form of storm damage. Now, this is where a lot of the confusion comes in, as to drench an enemy, you must be using an ability that says it will drench enemies. Water damage does not drench enemies. Which means if you're using water damage and storm damage, you will not get the electrocute combo. If you're drenching enemies and then hitting them with storm damage, you will. Now this combo is very, very e easy to reproduce on your hero as we do have the drenching strike shard in your weapon. In my opinion, it's kind of a no-brainer. It belongs in everybody's weapon. And then beacon of the storms in the gloves. So just with this combo of drenching strikes in the weapon and beacon of the storm in the gloves, you can very easily drench every single enemy and then cause that electrocute combo, which is going to just be massive amounts of crowd control in that lane. Now, although this effectively is a stun, it actually is categorized slightly different than a stun. So you can stun and electrocute an enemy at the same time. Now moving on to the servos and chips. Um, of course, we know we've got the fire servo, the water servo, the storm servo, and the earth servo. Now one important thing to note is all of these servos are going to net you less productivity 
than just using a power servo as it's going to give you more raw DPS and more overall power to your defense that it's going on. Now all of these servos or chips do convert that defense to that elemental type, which means if you take cannonball towers and you throw the fire servo on them, they are now doing fire damage. Now there are good and bad parts about this. Uh, first off, as I mentioned, the ignite combo is a very small amount of damage and it does remove oil. So before using any of these mods, make sure you're taking a look at what it's going to give you versus what it's going to take away. Uh, the same can really be said about the electrocute combo as the storm damage, once it hits a drenched enemy, it does in fact remove the drench. However, it replaces it with the electrocute stun. So although something is being taken, taken away, something is also being added. Now this is crucial in Onslaught, as when you look at Onslaught maps, there's going to be controlled burn enemies where you're going to want enemies drenched or oiled. And then there's also going to be enemies or lanes, for example, that take increased physical damage. Now, if you take your cannonball tower and you convert it to a fire, you know, fire cannons or fire bees or fire whatever, it is no longer giving you that physical damage. So in my opinion, you should never take any of the physical damage towers or defenses and put an element on them. Currently, we have so few forms of physical damage that it can be tough on some of these lanes to make sure you have physical damage provided. Once again, you have to get over the fact that, you know, what doesn't look cooler than fire bees? That is for darn sure. However, fire bees are going to take away the fact that bees do physical damage. That is going to hurt you in Onslaught, and in my opinion, not the way to go. Now, out of all of these servos and chips, there are quite a few that I would consider using basically any time you're not concerned with an elemental combo and you want to stack more defense power, remember that these will stack with a regular power servo. So you can add a power servo and a fire servo to a tower to increase its overall defense power and both of those items will add together. Now, I think the largest amount of confusion overall, at least from the comments I've been getting, is with the water damage. And once again, the water servo or the water chip does not drench enemies. So you will not get your electrocute combos that you're looking for unless you have some other form of drench in the mix. Now, overall, in my opinion, I think that the best servo is going to be storm damage as storm damage is going to proc that electrocute combo if there are enemies already drenched. So for me personally, any of the defenses that I want to really stack the defense power on and get an element and the raw defense power itself, I personally am going to go with storm, a storm servo the majority of the time. Now remember, I am not by any means saying do not use the elemental chips as they are fun and can be very effective and they add some absolutely awesome animations into the game. It is a game we're supposed to be having fun so by all means put fun first and put your calculator aside and don't sweat what you're losing if you're really enjoying what you're doing and if you're getting to that windscreen as no matter how you get there we all know we've got the same RNG no matter how easy we win the map. And trust me, there is no one that wants more than me for me to do a defense spotlight and call it fireflies and put some fire damage on those bees. However, thinking of the other aspects of the game and my goals in Onslaught, I just have a really hard time removing the physical damage from one of the few physical damage towers in the game. So just make sure that you think about what you're gaining and losing before you use any elemental mods. So hopefully this helps clarify some of the confusion about elemental combos and the servos and chips available in the Protean Shift update for Dungeon Defenders 2. So thank you all once again. If you have any questions about elements, make sure you let me know down in the comments below. As always, click that like button and please subscribe to the channel as there will be just a ton more Dungeon Defenders 2 headed this way. And I will see you next time around.
Take it easy.